What's up guys, welcome back to another Code Haven video. And the third part in this series of how to, how to create a calculator app in C-sharp. So the very first thing we're gonna do today is just take care of a real simple step, which is making sure that we take get rid of that zero and any other random input uh, right as we type in the first number. Obviously when they, they type in, you know, they just launched the app and they there's just a zero there, as you can see. Let's just launch it just to show you guys. So right now there's a zero, and if you click any button, um, it just keeps going. There's not really, it doesn't get rid of the zero. Now obviously it did because I just added this line, but before, or for any other number, it will not. And we gotta fix that. So right when they click these numbers, we need to make sure to clear out that input. And that's a pretty easy step. All we gotta do is just go down and add this to every single one. And let's not forget about zero. Okay, so the next part you're probably wondering is, wait a minute, if we if we erase the input, or at least the text, then how do, how do we know what to add and what to subtract? Well, the good news is we actually have a user input variable to keep track of that. And this is also gonna be a plus equals to just stack it up until they hit a plus or a minus button or whatever it is. And it's obviously going to be dependent on what number they're clicking. So in this case, it will be a 1. And the other thing we need to change is this actually needs to be that. So right now, as it stands, if they, if they, if this is proper, resetting. So right now, as it stands, this should erase the input, um, create, set the user input variable to 1, and display this so if we keep clicking one it should be endless ones but there should never be a zero so let's just give it a try okay so one and like i said it works which is fantastic so let's just quickly take care of this and go down the line and just make sure that all this is dependent resetting so let's take care of this and just add these little lines to every single one and i'll come back right resetting so let's just take care of this little thing and resetting. So let's just take care of this little thing right here, resetting. So let's take care of this easy step right here and apply it to every single number and I will get right back when I'm done. All right guys, we are back and we have successfully added these lines to every single number. So if we give it a quick launch, it should run as expected. So as we see here, it runs perfectly the zero is gone and the input is still tracked properly. Okay, so now let's take care of some of the functions. All right, so right now we have inside each function, for example, the plus button. Right now it just sets function to plus, but that doesn't really do anything. So inside each one of these, first we're gonna need to make sure that we hand off the current input to this first variable up here. So when they click plus, or whatever operator it is, the user input should be handed off to this first variable, and then it should be emptied, and then this function should be set to whatever one that the button was clicked. So, you know, the function would be plus, if plus was clicked, and vice versa. So let's just go down here and take care of that. So first thing, like I said, this first variable is going to equal the user input. And that's it. And then we're gonna empty out user input. And that should honestly be all we need to do for this because later on we will take care of the function variable and what that does. So let's just quickly add that to each one of these and I'll be right back. All right guys, so let's just quickly take care of the clear button here. Um, this actually doesn't need to be here. I was wrong about that. So what we're doing is just resetting every single variable. So function needs to be reset to nothing. Um, the first variable needs to be reset to nothing, as well as the second. And then we have the user input string, and that is nothing as well. And there should be one more variable. Yes, the result is set back to zero so that we can just reset everything. And also, let's not forget, just in case, let's erase what the calculator display says and do that okay 
great. And let's see this little error saying, empty character literal. I don't think that's a big deal. There's not an actual line error, so it's just kind of complaining about that, but we'll see if it comes up later. All right, so now that that's done, let's give it a quick run and just see if the clear button works. And it looks like it's actually going to complain about that. So let's X out and see how to fix this. All right, guys, so after digging around a little bit online and Stack Overflow, it looks like there actually isn't such a thing as an empty char. The closest you can get is actually a backslash zero, but even that, that's not really necessary for us. So the good news is function is only used for if they have an equal sign or minus sign or whatever it is. But the good news is, like I said, every time you click one of those buttons, function gets reset anyway. So that's good. And we don't need to worry about that. So right now we're resetting all these variables, which is great. And let's just save it and give it a quick run. Okay, so we have our app up. If we click, you know, some gibberish and click clear, then it should be fine, which is great. And actually let's, let's just make the clear, put the text back to zero. So let's just do that. Great, so now that every time that they decide to clear it, it goes back to zero, which is perfectly okay. And yeah, and like we added earlier, it still removes the zero once you click it. All right, guys, so one of the things that we need to do is go down to the bottom and find the equals button, which is right here. Um, actually remove this, we do not need this. And we're gonna add some simple if statements to it so that every time they click plus or minus, you know, uh, it'll depend what the function is. So first thing though, the second variable needs to equal user input when this button is clicked because we know that the user is done entering stuff and we could set it to the second variable. So right after we get the second user input, we're gonna to need to parse the data. And to do that, we need to create two new doubles. So let's just create double first num and then second num. Okay, so now that we've created our variables, what we need to do is parse the data from the string. So to do that, you actually call the first variable that you wanna set it to, which is first num and you set it equal to convert, and then there's a two double method, and then you have open brackets, or sorry, open parentheses, and inside here, we're gonna just enter first because that's what we want to convert. We're converting a string to a double, and that should work perfectly, just as long as there's nothing crazy in there, which isn't even possible, so that's good. And then let's just do the same thing for the second one, and instead of this, it's gonna say second, so now that we have converted that data, let's move on to the next part. Okay guys, so the next part here, we're just gonna have some simple if statements and it's gonna be based off uh, what the function is currently set to. So let's just add some blank if statements and then some else ifs. So here we go. Else if, and keep going down the line here. So we're gonna need four in total because, you know, plus, minus, multiply, divide. And yeah, so then we're gonna do the last else if here. And what I like to do is I always like to label it just so it's easier to find instead of looking inside the if. So for here, we'll do multiply and this one will be divide plus and minus. And you guys don't have to do this. This is completely up to you. I just like to do that because it looks cleaner. And a lot of times I'll add notes to the end of the entire project that way that anybody else looking at this in the future can easily look back at it and know what they're doing. Or even me, I could look back at my own code. Maybe it's been a while and I forgot about it and I could just easily find my way around. So this is a good way of doing things. Um, for this first if statement here, we're going to do if the function which is our character that's keeping track of everything. And that equals plus. What we need to do is set the result double that we have at the very top. The result is going to equal um, number one, or sorry, the first number 
plus the second number. Great. And then it's pretty simple for the next one as well. So we'll have function, and that's going to be equal to minus. And then the result is going to equal first num minus the second num. Great. And yeah, no errors there. So the third one here, this function is going to equal um, divide is this and if we need to do that so this this is a little bit um, special because if remember if you divide any number by zero it's just nothing you know a lot of calculators just like to put a little statement in there so what we're gonna do is if the number that they're dividing by which should be the second number of course so if the second num is equal to and let's add some brackets here. So if the second num is equal to um, zero, then we're going to complain. We're going to set the calculator text. Oops, not that. Calculator display.text. We're going to set that equal to. Um, let's just have a funny message in there. It will be like, oh, well. No. You can either has can set it to whatever you want. I'm just doing that just because. And then uh, I have an else. And then if we don't have it set to zero, then all we need to do is simply just compute the result. So that's going to be the first number divided by the second number. Great. And then, of course, we need to display that accordingly. But let's just take care of multiply real quick. So if the function is equal to this little asterisk here, then the result is going to be the first number times the second number. And there we are. So now, not only do we have to compute what the answer is going to be, but with the equal button, we also have to make sure to update the display accordingly. So the best way to do this is to convert this result back to a string and then display it. So we'll just call the calculator display.text, and that's going to be equal to the result to string. And then we need parentheses here. So let's just add this to every single line that it needs to be. So this is great because we don't really need to do anything special in there. And then here we do need to display the text properly and here as well. So now that all these functions are done, let's just go check and see if it's working right. All right, so let's try something simple like two plus two. Great, it's four. And the clear button should work. Awesome. And let's just add all this random stuff. So that plus, I don't know, 541. Okay, great. Um, the only thing I'm seeing here is that it does not go back to a zero once we have clicked clear. So let's just make sure that that's working still. So clear button, yeah, this has got to be a zero. That way that it just looks better. So let's start it up again. So let's say they add two plus two. Now they're done, click zero, or click clear, now it's back to zero. Great. All right guys, that's gonna conclude it for this three-part series. Um, one thing I wanna address is that I did talk about something about resizing in the other video. However, I did quickly discovered with a little bit of research that that's actually gonna take a lot more work to scale each one of these buttons up accordingly and this label here. So that's really gonna be an entirely different tutorial. If you want me to do that, please drop a comment down below saying that you would like that. Um, but for now, we're just gonna stick with this. If you guys wanna pursue that, go ahead. There's plenty of resources online that will show you how. But for now, we're just gonna keep this tutorial simple and short, just the basic functionality of what we need here with this calculator app. All right, guys, one more thing I wanted to mention before you take off. Uh, in the last video, I also mentioned uh, we were going to 
you know, be able to press the number on the keyboard, like number one, it also pressed it in here. However, I quickly found out that also takes a lot of side work. And like I said, I can definitely make a video if you'd be interested in that, or a video on the other thing I had mentioned before. But for now, I wanna keep it as simple as possible, just cut and dry. You know, I wanna keep these videos around 10 minutes. They can go a little over, um, but for now, this calculator app is perfectly functioning and we don't necessarily need that. But like I said, tutorials, I'm totally open to doing it. Just let me know down in the comments. If you like this video, please drop a like, comment down below your thoughts and suggestions, and also feel free to subscribe to my channel for more of this content. And with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.